The title of this video is about having transgender children, but the same goes with anything. If you can't handle your kids turning out trans or any gender, gay, autistic, disabled, or anything else that kids can be, don't have kids. You can't control that aspect of them. You can only deny it and hurt them. We don't need more bullies and abusers in the world, least of all toward people who are totally dependent on you. This video isn't for people who outright hate all trans people because they exist. If you hate trans people or think they're coming for your kids... Why don't you go flush yourself down a toilet, you c- But if you aren't a bigot, this video might be for you. Today we're talking about parents who think they're doing what's right for their kids, but end up hurting them. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. Big thanks to Ren for sponsoring this video. He once moved to a town where dancing was prohibited, but now apparently he's a company and he's giving all the YouTubers money. Thanks, Ren! Right now there's a huge push against trans people in the English-speaking world and presumably elsewhere. Right-wingers in the US and UK are pushing for policies and encouraging violence tantamount to genocide. If you choose now to get skittish about trans people when they need support more than ever, you should understand that you're contributing to bigotry and are part of this attempt at the genocide of trans people. But why? What's so hard to understand? The person is a different gender from what you thought by the genitals they were born with. That shouldn't matter for anything. There's always an excuse not to treat people with respect. And in the case of trans people, the excuses have been pouring in. If you're a willing participant in shaming and hounding trans people, you're a bigot. And you should not have kids. This isn't the place to go into the long roots of the current trans panic, but parents need to know something about gender if they want to have kids in a century where gender means a lot more than just what you've got between your legs. To understand gender, you'll need to throw out most of the beliefs you've been fed your whole life. Fathers and mothers each have this weird combination of stereotypes and hopes that holds them back from accepting their trans kids. They're brought up to embrace gender stereotypes about what boys and girls and men and women are supposed to be. They have this intense reaction to trans people because trans people are proof that their gender-based plans for their children could change. Fathers who don't understand that it's inborn will think if their child is gay or trans, they screwed up somehow. They didn't give their boys enough violent toys and force them into competitive sports and beat them for wearing dresses, so they turn trans. Mothers find out their daughter or granddaughter is actually a boy, and they cry for the tragic loss of their daughter. They had all these plans for their daughter, you see. She was going to be a princess and with long hair and marry a nice young man in a church, and so on and so on. She's not allowed to be a boy and disappoint me like that. Then they go online and things get complicated. Dads go to the Daily Wire and listen to people make shit up that confirms their prejudices. Moms go to places like Mumsnet to hear about how evil people on the internet are pressuring and even forcing their daughters to take drugs and get surgery and become boys. But it's all made up by the people pushing for the deaths of trans people. Bigots have adopted the term gender ideology to describe letting people be who they really are, because respect is a foreign ideology to them, and call themselves gender critical, because right-wingers tend to adopt language to hide their real intentions, and these people do not think critically about gender at all. Gender is much more complicated than the roles 
you imagine are natural, but gender ideology sounds bad, so these mothers get scared, and gender critical sounds like someone is finally standing up to all this terrible treating people the way they want to be treated. Parents get encouraged to take away their kids' phones and internet access, because it's the evil online people telling the kids lies, whereas obviously the people the parents talk to online are telling the truth, not spouting a lot of right-wing lies. <laughs> Why bother looking up the biology or anthropology or history behind gender? Angel Mother 66 is the only source I need to know the truth. Then they go beyond making their children's lives shit to trying to legislate and harass trans people out of public space altogether. Part of the problem here is parents and grandparents project their fantasies onto children. They have these hopes and dreams for their kids, and then they transition or just go a different route, and the parents get angry. They get all self-righteous about it and start claiming parents should have the power to dictate everything to their children until their children are 18, and even after that. They've started calling it parents' rights. These parents think they're entitled to customize their child like a sim. Oh, you're not doing what I want you to do with your life all the time? Then get out! You're only allowed to be and do what your parents say. You're not allowed to lie to your parents anymore, even if they're abusing you. Parents' rights! We have to own our children in order to safeguard them. That's the newest anti-trans jargon word, by the way, safeguarding. We're safeguarding kids. From what, you might ask? Certainly not from abuse. This whole parents' rights thing comes from an assumption that parents always know and do what's best for their own children, and should face no resistance to their parenting from anyone. After all, a loving parent couldn't possibly abuse their own children, right? Except in 80% of cases. Parents are people, and like many people, they want to understand you on their terms. The thing is, people don't always conform to our preconceptions about what people are supposed to be. There's so much individual variance in things like body shape, gender, and what people want to do with their lives that to impose your definitions on kids is to put arbitrary limits, pressure, and shame on them. If you're always telling them they're not allowed to dress the way they want, why? If you're always telling them to lose weight, do you think that helps them? Do you tell them how to express themselves, not to cry or feel sad or grieve, but push it down inside? You might think you're toughening them up, but you could just be traumatizing them. You might be discouraging healthy displays of emotion and encouraging sudden outbursts of rage. I think it's obvious some, maybe most Americans, have always suppressed their healthy emotions, which is why they can only communicate with violence. I think this inability to understand and express themselves is what leads to mass shooters, abusers, police, and soldiers. Well, one of the many factors, anyway. Frankly, parents, your beliefs and hopes and expectations are your problem. Your kids don't need your pressure, the outdated ideas you heard about online, your prejudices, or your expectations. They need your unconditional love and care. And they need you to listen. If your child doesn't feel comfortable telling you the truth about themselves, why do you think that would be? Children are not your property. They're whole people who will grow up as healthy adults unless you traumatize them and take away all their freedom. But not all parents can accept that. They got abused and forced and contained by their parents, so they think they're supposed to do the same to their kids. They don't want to break any cycles. You know, my dad taught me to beat my kids until they do everything I say, so that must be the correct way to raise a child, because I turned out perfectly, obviously. They might yell at their kids, 
use sarcasm, put them down, but as soon as the child does the same, the violence begins. That's because these parents don't see their kids as worthy of the same respect as adults. As if being a parent confers the right or even the obligation to beat people who can't do anything about it. If you've ever watched online conversations among transphobes, you'll notice when they bring up parents' rights or parents' consent, it's usually because another adult did something harmless or something that would be good for the child, like affirming their gender, giving them a shoulder to cry on. Uh, giving them a little space to be themselves without constant monitoring. Giving advice about how hormones work. You know, like any sexual health clinic or even a well-informed school nurse. Mermaids gives 13 and 14 year olds chest binders, even behind parents' backs, for the same reason other services give them free condoms, contraceptive pills, and abortions. Teenagers have a right to make informed choices about their own bodies, and this is historically the feminist view. But the trans folks say, this is a travesty, because the parents need to know everything the child does, no matter what, so they can punish and manipulate the child accordingly. Of course, they're legislating that schools are not allowed to even bring up the topics of gender and sexuality, except to re repeat and reaffirm religious dogma. Of course, they take away their kids' phone and internet privileges. Kids aren't allowed to learn about anything the parent does not approve of first. So the kids get to grow up just as ignorant and close-minded as their parents. No support from friends or concerned adults who have knowledge and experience. Just total parental control. Apparently, your parents should control your body, control your movement, and decide your gender and sexuality. And they will isolate you from the rest of the world if you refuse to conform to their demands. Because they love you. There's a much bigger point to be made here about how, how much disdain as, as we as a culture have for freedom, especially that of young people, but I won't get too deep into it here. You could check out Andrew's video on youth liberation, here, let's just say, parents are some of the most effective prison guards. Now, you may say, if they don't want their kids to learn, why send them to school? Well, the answer is, school doesn't teach kids much either. Oh, sure, it teaches them how they're expected to conform to this oppressive modern world we live in, but not how to be themselves. School is a place where all the learning is approved by official people with authority and degrees. You strictly limit what your child is exposed to at home, and they learn nothing new at school. Then they leave school ignorant, confused, completely unprepared for anything to come, and the parents and schools pat themselves on the back. They want their children in the dark about everything except the religious, political, nationalist indoctrination they learn at school, and that one future profession the parents think their kids are being prepared for. Just like all violations of freedom, keeping kids in the dark is all excused as necessary to keep them safe. But it's clear from what they say they're not interested in keeping kids safe. The line is always, they're giving kids drugs and hormones and surgery. There are better videos than this one for explaining everything wrong with that, so you could watch this video maybe. But the same people have never said anything about giving cis kids puberty blockers or other hormones for medical reasons and to affirm their genders, because affirming cisgender kids isn't the problem. You might have heard all kinds of made-up nonsense about surgeries that aren't being done to children, and, and of course the people spreading it around have no interest in learning how wrong they are. Doctors won't simply perform surgery on kids without any parents' involvement. You might be thinking of how we mutilate and torture intersex kids. But no, in fact, the bills banning letting trans people transition have exceptions for invasive surgery on intersex kids. Right-wingers will never stop trying, uh, never try to stop that kind of surgery from being performed because it enforces conformity. 
That's not the specific kind of irreversible surgery being performed on kids that they consider important. They only care about the imaginary kind. But you see, as part of their campaign to kill as many queer people as possible, they have to talk about surgery. They have to say genital surgery is being performed on little kids. It's the most dramatic part of their rant. They claim not telling the parents is the problem when they complain just as loudly about kids who go through care in consultation with their parents. They say the problem is what's being done to children, because they love that word, but they complain just as loud when it happens to someone who's 17 or even much older than that. They don't want anyone to transition. And they love using the emotionally loaded word children to describe practically anyone. I remember when Elliot Page came out and everyone took up the chorus again. Look at what's being done to children. Dude's in his 30s. At what point are you allowed to make your own decisions? <laughs> to a right winger, of course, the answer is never. They will legislate all the correct decisions for you. People gleefully bring up higher suicide rates, or even like specific suicides among trans people, as a reason not to affirm any trans person's gender. This person here being subtweeted actually like used their own niece's recent suicide as a dunk on trans people. And none of these people mention those numbers they like to cite with no context drop back down for people whose families and communities accept them. Colin Mockery accepts and sticks up for his trans daughter, and this is their home life. It could be yours, too. You can't stop kids from being trans. You can only either build a closet around them and put a lock on it because you fear who they could be, or you can accept them for who they are. I've heard parents say their kid never showed any sign of wanting to be like a boy or a girl or both or neither. What signs would you expect to see? A lot of these parents base their understanding of gender on the stereotypes we were all brought up on, or worse, learned on the internet. They think their kids are super susceptible to being manipulated online, but the parents aren't. They're just following facts and logic and stuff. Only other people get tricked and indoctrinated. Well, maybe the kids did show signs, but you missed them. Or suppressed them. Parents are always telling their kids not to do things and punishing them if they see it done a second time. Kids don't always feel comfortable telling their parents the truth because they don't trust their parents to listen and understand, but just react and judge and punish. Whose fault is that? Just because you're older doesn't mean you always know better, especially if you don't listen. Yes, parents are supposed to protect their kids, but let's not confuse that cultural standard with the assumption that parents are always protecting their kids. Sometimes they harm them, too. It's an inevitable consequence of considering children unable to judge anything for themselves. Their brains are not as developed as those of adults, sure, and, and they, they haven't had as much time to learn about the world, so they need adults around for some things. But they don't need constant control. And if you can't let your adolescent child out of your sight, when will they ever learn any kind of independence? When do you stop treating them like babies or pets and start respecting them as individuals who understand themselves better than you? Whether or not you consider this parents' rights stuff a form of abuse, it leaves children wide open for any other form of abuse. I shouldn't have to explain it. The parents control everything, including communication. What's a kid supposed to do? Who are they supposed to talk to? Knowing these parents, they'd probably label you a groomer just for listening to a child tell you they're trans without contradicting them. These right-wingers have muddied the water so much, parents could be doing just about anything to their children, and the only thing that matters is whether or not the parents are queer. 
Not only is all this groomer shit the right wing has come up with obviously another step in their bigotry against all queer people, it makes it practically impossible to know if a parent is abusing their child. They've redefined grooming to mean teaching kids something the parents disapprove of. How are we supposed to get the actual groomers? Right-wingers clearly don't care about actual pedos and groomers. In fact, I'm guessing that along with the mass slaughter of queer people, protecting pedos is the whole point of all this groomer stuff. Look how many right-wingers pal around with and protect pedos. What we can discern from their actions is they love abuse and hate queer people. But hey, if you don't consider this authoritarian parenting abuse, it doesn't matter because if you're a parent, you won't be the one who's traumatized. It's your child who will have to live with what you've done to them. We get told trans kids often cut off ties with their families, and it's obvious why. Because the families reject them. Presumably because they heard some bullshit on the internet and at church. Okay, now let me quote from Lee Brontide at Ammonite Inc. As a therapist, I've been with many clients who've made the decision to stop having their parents in their lives. I have never and would never dictate such a decision to a client. No therapist who doesn't want a lawsuit would. It's a massive overstep in our role. Every client I've seen exit relationships with their parents. Every one, genuinely 100% genuinely tried to make these relationships work for years to no avail. It's not something people do lightly. It's stigmatized, it's painful, it's shamed, it's often painful and traumatic. People only do it because the alternative is worse. The problem we have is that the narrative is that maybe it's sometimes okay for adult kids to cut off parents if that parent was sufficiently abusive and hasn't changed since that abuse happened. The burden of proof is on the adult child, and it's high and slippery. We don't talk much about the parents who reject their child who may not cut off communication completely, but who use any and all available contact to try to force their adult children into conforming to what the parent wants them to be. These parents aren't criticized for abandonment of these relationships. In fact, they get sympathy for behavior that harms their child and provides none of the benefits these relationships supposedly provide. The common theme I see for clients who sever parental relationships isn't queerness or even physical abuse. The parents who get cut off are those who expect and demand to retain control in these relationships and reject their adult children's many efforts to negotiate boundaries. People who want to unilaterally dictate who gets to assert what boundaries in the relationship very, very rarely are open to changing that dynamic. So, after years of efforts to reach out, to be understood, to compromise, the kids give up. And only then do the parents realize that they're the power their adult children had all along, the power to leave. And then they pitch a fit and play the victim because it feels like to them the rules of the game they'd been winning have suddenly changed. And before anyone wants to be silly at me, call me by the name and pronouns that don't make me miserable is not the same as I can criticize you however I want as much as I want and mock or shut down any feelings you have about it. You don't want your kids to grow up and stop talking to them? To you? Listen to them. Normalize collaboratively setting boundaries and learn to respond well to people having feelings and needs that make you uncomfortable. Let them be their own people. When your kids are adults, you have to let go of your need to control them or their relationship really, really should have been loosening the reins long before then. This is a major conflict with teens that doesn't need to be this way. Adults are your peers. Treat them with the respect that that entails, and you'll likely find them a lot more open to trusting you, listening to you, and helping you. To finish off this vid, let me read from one other thread. This one from someone whose son is trans. I said some words on Twitter today that I haven't used here before. My son. For almost 16 years, I thought I'd given birth to a daughter in 2006, but this summer, he corrected me. Characteristically, my kid doesn't want a big deal made out of it, but here's what I want to say. Parenting a trans child is an adjustment. It just is. However, 
I don't mourn or grieve the daughter I thought I had. The work I've done on myself has been a joy to undertake. One, I had about 10,000 questions. Some of them needed to be answered right away. What should we call you? Do you want to be out to everyone we know? Others could wait. It was important to parcel out my questions and ask them when he felt like answering. Two, I immediately started practicing talking about him. It was my responsibility to figure out how to get it consistently right, not his responsibility to forgive me for getting it wrong because I couldn't be bothered. I talked about him out loud until it felt natural. The biggest piece of work I did on myself goes back to not mourning. My daughter hadn't gone anywhere. Our memories, our relationship, everything we shared was as real as ever. I just had to go retcon those memories, take out the old gender, and put in the correct one. Over the summer, I spent time reflecting on his life, the things we'd done together, conversations we'd had, and I put son into the narratives instead of daughter. It was a joyful and affirming process for me to see how he'd always been himself, and still is. If you're parenting a transgender child and you're feeling the ache of grief for the daughter or son you thought you had, I implore you to reframe that. All you've lost is what was inside your own mind, expectations and framings that never had to do with your child at all. Your memories don't have to be a source of sadness. Instead, filling your memories with the new knowledge you now have of your child's real self only makes them richer and can make your love for them deeper than ever. It's possible to have a happy home life, whatever kind of kids you have, but not if you can't accept them for who they are.